in our Lord so that you can also praise and worship him. This is what we do as she says Wednesday night fellowship. We're fellowshipping with you yes. bringing that holiness of God yes. right into your living space. Thank you for tuning in. Friends and brothers, I'm, I'm, I'm Johnny Rutledge. I'm your preacher this afternoon and I want you to know something. 
I come by way of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I mean to do what does say the Lord. And I love the fact that we are doing it every day. But we get this opportunity on Wednesday to bring it to you. I want to thank God for my wife. And I thank Jesus for her yes. anointing. That anointing is so powerful. It changes. It breaks the yoke. And it changes even the atmosphere. No matter which way we go, where we're going, what we're doing. We always find ourselves right in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we are happy to be right here. We're proud of what God is doing with us, but we also want you to be a part of it. We invite you every day. I, I pray, and Thank I pray you. every day that you get Thank it, you. that it become a part of your life, and that you get some joy, and you get some excitement, and you give God some kind of praise. Psalms 150 say, praise the Lord. Praise Him with everything, everything you got. You ain't get, do like do like Franklin Beverly did when he was with uh, Marvin Gaye. He didn't have no... No, 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 uh, no, no bells. He didn't have no cowbells. And Marvin was like, let's get it on. And Frankie took some old milk jugs and a spoon and he beat that thing. And you hear that in the recording. That is what God is saying. Praise me with what you got. And I love it. I mean, I just love it. I love it with everything in me. I never would have done this prior to this day if God had not have given me his anointing, given me his spirit. Again, I want to praise and thank the Lord for my wife doing exactly what she do and being the woman of God that she is. This is not a subsidy. This is not a step down when you talk about praise. We need to reach where she is. We don't need to say, well, yeah, the praise is good. Let's get to the word. The word come by way of that anointing, and that anointing starts with a praise. The Bible says David danced through the streets. Till his outer garment came off, and even though his wife talked about him, he praised God with all that he had. And that's what we're talking about. If you're going to be in the presence of God, praise him. That's, that's the foundation of what it is to be a man or woman of God, is how you praise. Well, I worship like this. I, well, you ain't praising. You ain't making no noise. You ain't letting God hear you. you, ain't, you, you what you is is afraid of what you can do. Let it go and let God and see where you may end up is exactly where God's will is for your life. I love you today and I praise and thank God for you. Again, my name is Johnny Rutledge. I'm your preacher for the hour. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Father, we just humble ourselves. We quiet our hearts. We know that this is the most sacred time of our life is when we reduce our humanness to just a prayer. So you can hear the beat from within our mind. You can hear the vibration from our heart. Lord, we want you to know, God, we don't even know what to pray. We don't know how to pray. As, the, as them boys ask you out there, Jesus on the journey, Teach us how to pray. And Jesus, your reply was to always honor, honor the Father, which art in heaven, and hallowed be his name. And just lift that name above your name. Lift it above my mind. So God, I thank you for letting us have the greatest name ever given to human beings by which way we got saved. The name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And though she's not here, somebody ought to say amen. I'll say amen. Amen and amen and amen. And praise God, I love you. I praise God and thank God for you. To all y'all that are listening, to all y'all that may have a mind to understand that the word of God is coming forth, embrace this reality. No matter what you heard, no matter what someone told you, no matter where you've been in your life, no matter what you got, no matter what you don't have, I guarantee you tonight, I guarantee you, you take note of this, that if you praise and lift up the name of Jesus, your circumstance, your life, 
and everything about you will change instantaneously. You don't have to feel it. You don't have to see it. It will start happening within this universe. It will work its way towards you. It will get within you, get on you, get around you, and everything about you will shift to something more divine because God loves to hear a praise. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to, he said, you, you lift my name, I'll draw all men unto me. And when Moses lifted up that, that, that serpent out there in the wilderness, he kept winning the battle. When Jesus was lifted up, we kept winning the battle. And so if you lift up the name of Jesus Christ, we win the battle. We win when you lift the name of Jesus. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I wanted to introduce myself again. I am your preacher for the hour. We have a word. We have a word from God and preaching ought to be just like this. Open the Bible and let the Holy Spirit lead and then go from there. And we'll end up exactly where we need to. What is this Holy Spirit anyway? And why is it teaching us? Why is it leading and guiding us? Why is it comforting us? Why is this providing for us? Why is it ministering in us? You know why? Because Jesus said, I'll go away, but I'll leave you a comforter. He said, until I come back now, I'm coming back at my church without a blemish or a spot. I'm coming back at those that are holy. I'm coming back. Nobody will be in captivity ever again. I, I'm leaving now, going to be with my father, but I'm coming back. I'm sitting there in glory, but I'm coming back. When Jesus comes back, he'll gather all the saints. What a glorious time that will be. They told me about a battle of Armageddon out there, way out there in between Jerusalem and somewhere. And then folks are going to be fighting and all this world going, army is going to come in on Israel and all this. And the Bible said Jesus just spoke a word and the battle was won. Just a word. When you want, when you want to have a general that didn't need a weapon, just a word. That's all he, that's all he used, a word. And what he say in this universe is honored by everything except man. Man is the, is the least passive resistance. Man don't go right, never. But God loved man. He made man, he created man. He said man was good. So he restored man and then he died for man. And then he made man what he considered to be the apple of his eye. So today it's man that God is trying to regain back to his rightful place, which is in the presence of the divine Holy Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All he want to do is just be back with you. So give what God has come for, which is your soul. You'll be forever blessed for doing that. Don't let nobody tell you a lie. There's no jump in the hoop, writing 39 passages of scripture, no religious experience. This come by way of your repentance acceptance and acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. When I don't Calvary, died and gave his life that you don't have to die. He was the, he was the lamb, unblemished, unspot, the only one that could redeem human beings. So therefore, if accept him on your behalf and he will give you life and life more abundantly right now today, not tomorrow. This is not a process, what Jesus did. He sacrificed everything, and when he said it was finished, he didn't say, well, that's the first step. I paid a down payment on your salvation. No, he said it was finished. It is complete. It is well and done, and you never have to worry about it again. Once God sacrificed his son for your life, that you may have life, eternal life, you don't never have to worry about the stages, the steps of religion to get it. You got it. Just accept it, my brothers and sisters. Accept Jesus Christ today. And believe in him and accept him and believe in him and accept him. That's all we are able to do. Believe in him and accept what he did on our behalf. And we too are, we are instantaneously changed, transformed, renewed, born again. All of that comes to us by way of our faith because it was a gift of grace. It was not something we could work for. I pray that you got me because I wanted to tell you all these things that God say tell you. <laughs> I want to see what this chapter of eight, chapter eight, 
in the book of Isaiah has to say because the Bible fell open to it. I got a passage of scripture the Lord gave me today. I don't I want to work with it. But, I, but I, I'm just mindful of the Bible, mindful of the word. Let me see what it says. It says, moreover, the Lord said unto me, take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning Mahasha has bads. I, I, that's a long name or word or whatever it is. And I took unto me faithful witness to the record Uriah the priest. Zechariah, son of Jabor, Jabor, Jabarakah, and I went unto the prophets, the prophetess, and she could, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord unto me, Call his name Mahashah Hasbaz. For be, but before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father, my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria shall be taken away before the kings of Assyria. The Lord spoke also unto me, saying, For as much as this people refuse the water of Shiloh, that go softly and rejoice in resin and Rehalia, Son, now therefore, behold, Lord, bring up unto them water of the, of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria in all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. The Lord wanted me to read that. Someone needed to hear that. Someone needed to hear it because the Bible is, all of it is good and true and yea and amen. So I just obeyed the spirit and I read what it said. Now let me get to the passage of scripture God had for me. And maybe you'll be blessed by this because it sure did bless my soul today, reading this passage of scripture. It sure did bless my soul. It really turned me into a good place of spirit. Again, I praise and thank God that we have the word because without the word, we would not have instructions. We wouldn't have a map. We wouldn't have no guides to get us nowhere we need to be. So therefore, the word is all of that. And I praise him for it. If, if you can understand what this passage of scripture says, then you can also receive the greatest gift I believe God has for mankind. I believe that. And I'll show you why I believe that. Now here, in the book of Luke, this parable was given to this tribe. Because he asked a question. He asked, he, asked, he asked a question. And Jesus in return, Socratically, in other words, Jesus, instead of answering the question, asked him a question. And asking him that question, Jesus already knew his heart, but Jesus even revealed further what this lawyer, this scribe, was thinking. And God blessed this passage of scripture because it taught us so much. It taught us so much to where today we ought to all live by it. If we really were to be honest with ourselves and just tell the truth, we ought to be somebody's neighbor. You know, neighbor is it, it, in Greek, it means somebody that, um, uh, is near you, somebody near you. I think that's what the Greek meaning of it. Someone that's near to you, someone that's near, right? Your neighbor. In Hebrew, it means someone that you, from, you, you have relations with or someone you deal with more than just near you. You really are encountering them. In Hebrew, that's what it means. So let's read this passage of Scripture. Let's read it because it's going to be helpful to us. And it starts out with Luke chapter 10, the 25th verse, it reads like this. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Remember that question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? That's what the, that's what the lawyer, that's what the scribe asked Jesus. Okay, then Jesus being, you know, the Bible have... Y'all know how they do in these Bibles. They put all his stuff in red 
So I know that's Jesus talking there. And Jesus said, what is written in the law? How readest thou? This is, a, this is a King James Version of the Bible. It's the hardest uh, translation, I think. You know, not exactly Hebrew, but it's hard to read. So most people get all these NIVs, the American Standard, or, or they get the Living Bible, whatever it is to make real good English translation, whatever. I read what I got, and this is what I got. So maybe one day I'll buy something different. But right now, this is what we got. So let's read it, let's read it further. In the 26th verse of the 10th chapter, Luke, it says, Jesus said unto him, what is, what, what is written in the law, and how readest thou? And in the 27th verse, the gentleman replied, he said, and he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all, the, all thy strength, and with all of thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Now, that last passage of that 27th verse is where all of this stuff comes to a head. Uh, if we was at the end of a rainbow, and they say that, you know, the leprechaun treasure there, or the gold is there, whatever. That's what, what this would be. The last passage, the last few words of that, the last sentence of that verse, uh, where he says, and thy neighbor as thyself. Now, he mentioned all this other stuff because it comes straight out of De Deuteronomy, I think, 89, and uh, it talks about exactly what he said, and Jesus used this over in Matthew and and I think it was Mark where Jesus talked about the same thing as far as who is a neighbor and what is what, what all this. But anyway, when he said that, when, when the scribe or the lawyer said that, he, he didn't take time to notice that part of it would be important. But Jesus did. And Jesus said in the 28th verse, he said, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou shall live. Jesus said, you got it right, lawyer. You got it right, strive. You got it right, Sanhedrin. You got it right, fella of the law. I mean, you know, Mosaic teacher. You got it right. All that's right. You, you, you hear it all. In the 20th verse, you, you did that. You got it right. But this guy, this priest, this, 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 this scribe, this this whatever he was, this, this, this person of knowledge, this lawyer, in the 29th verse, he come back and says, because he was trying to justify himself, he wanted to outsmart Jesus, I believe. He wanted to make it so that Jesus is not aware of what he's saying, or he wanted to do the trickery stuff, you know, like, okay, Jesus, you, you say I got it right, but tell me this right here. And then he, he said, willing to justify himself, he said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? Remember I told you now in that 27 verse, the last part of that passage of scripture coming out of Deuteronomy and Leviticus that he quoted, that he quoted was exactly what Jesus said is to do. And then you'll have life, eternal life, because that's what he has. You know, how do I get eternal life? How I inherit it. Jesus said, do these things that's in the book and you'll have it. And then all of a sudden, he want to justify himself. He really does. And he asked Jesus that question. Have anybody ever asked you a question? You know, who you live next to? or who you associate with, uh, who is your best friend, um, who, do you who, who are you familiar with, you know, uh, spiritually, who you get along with, who is your neighbor, who is your neighbor, you know, who, that's what the fellow asked Jesus, who is my neighbor then, Jesus? And Jesus, being God in the flesh, count itself not he counted it not robbery to be equal with his father in heaven he knew he was the son of god but him and the father is one and he did this purposely i believe the answer set us on fire jesus came back and said uh <laughs> a certain man 
went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, who stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and they departed and left him half dead. You know, I guess moments away from dying, they beat him so bad. They stripped him of everything he had, possibly had a beast, possibly had fine clothes, linens, and all these things, possibly had extra money or whatever, and they took everything with him and then beat him almost to death, left him in a ditch to die. Left him in a ditch to die. That's what Jesus is saying right here in this passage of Scripture. Half dead. Now, the 31st verse, it says this, And by chance there came down a certain priest, and that priest came the same way that that man was, you know, traveling. The man was traveling from, the Bible says, from Jerusalem to Jericho. He may have been a citizen of Jericho. He may have been a citizen of some other city. But he was leaving Jerusalem and he probably had purchased things. Jerusalem had a city where people could buy merchandise. They could do this and they could do that. So he probably had a good lock of stuff. But on that road, on that road, on that road, on that road, thieves were known to wait for, 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 for sojourners, for people going back and forth, wherever they would go. Thieves and murderers would wait and they would plot and they wait on some innocent soul that had no protection or no caravan or no, uh, you know, company. And they would rob them and kill them and steal everything they got. But this guy survived. They threw him in a ditch to die, but he survived. And Jesus is telling the story that a priest went by that way where the man was beat, all that. The priest didn't get robbed. The priest didn't get beat, thrown in the ditch, stripped of all that stuff. But when the priest saw saw the man, and he saw him in the ditch, bleeding, possibly the priest concluded in his mind, he did anyway, so let me just go to the other side. The Bible said he crossed over to the other side, refused to even help him or deal with him, just kind of said in his mind, I didn't see nothing, ain't nothing happening, ain't nothing there, you know. Another one bite the dust. And then all of a sudden, Jesus continued the parable, the story, and Jesus said, uh, likewise, a Levite, another religious man, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the priestly type of person. The Bible says, Jesus in the 32nd verse says, when he was at that place, he didn't just pass by, he looked up on it and then passed by on the other side. He went and looked and saw the man in the ditch and how horrible it was. And then he went to the other side and passed by, went on by his business. But in the 33rd verse, which we ought to all get a part of this passage of scripture, 33rd verse, a certain Samaritan, as he saw a journey, probably going back to Samaria, coming from Jerusalem, probably had business, probably was a merchant, because what his actions showed, he wasn't a beggar, he wasn't in need of anything, because he had everything he needed. But he, a certain Samaritan, as he, as he, as, as, as he journeyed, came where he was, he came to the ditch. And when he saw him, the Bible said he had compassion on him. Jesus tells the story. So Jesus has never lied. That's the one thing we can all agree about Jesus Christ. He's never told not one lie. There ain't one lie in this Bible Jesus ever told. So Jesus said these words, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Brothers and sisters, I'm your, I'm, I'm your neighbor. Jesus said, that's, that's the qualification. Neighbor, you know. All them things Jesus told the man, said, man said, well, um, heh, you know, 
first of all, shall love God. You know, shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. And then he says, thy neighbor as thyself. Love your neighbor as yourself. You got to love your neighbor like you love yourself. You got to love God with all that strength, all that, your mind, your heart, everything. And then you got to love your neighbor as your, like you love you. You got to love your neighbor. That's what, that's what, that's what the commandment say. Jesus said, do that and you'll have life, eternal life. Now, Jesus ain't never promised something he couldn't deliver. Jesus say, do that and you live. <laughs> so you said it right. That's what, that, yeah, do it and you shall have life. You, you, you will be living, you, will have, you won't be dying, you'll be living if you do that, your neighbor thing. Now, the Samaritan. The Samaritan. Y'all know what Samaritans are? Samaritan people. You know, the Samaritans in the Bible. You know, when, when Assyria, when, 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 when the ten tribes of Israel, when the ten tribes was taken into captivity and put into bondage, made slaves and all this stuff, some, the other two tribes and the other people, some stayed back, some of the Jews stayed back and they most of them lived in Samaria. But by being in Samaria, this, this, Assyr this Assyrian king sent tribes of other types of people to inhabit the city of Samaria. And those people that were left back in Samaria began to interact, marry, and have relations with those Samarians. And they then became what the Jews now say, infected. Mm. In other words, they, they, they became not real whole Jews. So what happened was, those new people that came, those new people that came to Samaria, they brought their religions. And they brought all their practices and everything. So those that were Jews, they started following all those gods, believing in all those gods, and then... The Syrian king sent priests from the captivity and sent them back. So y'all go back and help them folks. Preach the truth. What you talk about is mosaic stuff to them. Help them. It didn't change anything. They remained that way. They mixed with other people. They, they worship other religions, just like Solomon. They did all of that. But the Samaritan people were not cursed because when, when, when uh, you know, Hezekiah, you know, when he was sent back to build a wall and, and, and the temple was being rebuilt, all these things, the Samaritan wouldn't be a part of that temple building and all that. They say they built a temple in Gershon where, you know, Jacob well and all that other stuff. So they built a stuff up there. And they said, this where Moses say is the holy place. So we built our temple pit. So they had their own temple. But they still mix religion. They mix the religions. Judaism with other kind of religion. And that's what they were worshiping. So the Jews, the true Jews, the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, those that believe in just the Mosaic stuff, and the prophets, they said these people ain't no never be our neighbors. They ain't no never be our, our nothing. We, we, we hate these folks. And that was going to go on forever until Jesus. I'm talking about the Samaritan that came by the ditch, saw the man that was dying, saw the man that was stripped naked, all of his belongings. He probably had food and stuff to take back to his family that he bought from Jerusalem. And those murderers and robbers, they stripped him of everything he had, laid him there to die. But the priest walked over there and looked at him, shook his head and went to the other side. The, the, the Levite went there and did the same thing. But then come the Samaritan yes, on his way back to the place where the Jews despised, had nothing to do with. And you know what he did? He said, now that's something wrong here. Yes, sir. This man has been mistreated. So he, the Bible says, 
He took oil and wine, and then he fixed the man up, and then he put him on his own beast. He took him to an inn. He paid for folks to take care of him. Yeah. But do you know that that wine that he used was like, um, it was like a sterilization. It actually yeah. was healing for the wound. Healing bomb. The wounds that he was, whew, the wounds that he had endured, the, the wine, he washed them out with it. He cleaned out the wounds of the man. Yes, sir. And then he started doctoring on the man. The man was hurting so bad and groaning and everything. He took his oil, the olive oil, and he, he soaked the man's body so that the man could have some relief from the pain. It numbed the pain. And then he laid him on his beast and rode him to the nearest end and said, listen. I don't have no where I can take this man, but I got these denarios. Will two denarios let him stay here until he get better? Yeah. The innkeeper say yes, bring him in. He said, but now just in case, he, he don't heal fast. I'm coming back through in the next season because I got to come back to Jerusalem, buy supplies and go back to Samaria. So when I come through, if I owe you anything more for taking care of him, keep the tab and I'll pay it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus didn't explain this, and y'all, I don't think I'm doing it right, but Jesus is telling us your neighbor is who you see in need, and you have something to help them, and you supply the need, and you go on about your business without expecting payback, yes. and you don't look to the right or the left. You just yes. say, I got to help you out this ditch. I got to give you what you, listen, I know they stole everything you got, but listen to me, you got your life. Yes, sir. I'm your neighbor. You see, the Greek says, a neighbor is somebody that's right near you. Yes. The Jews say, a neighbor is someone that you shake hands with. The neighbors, you, you, you trade bread with. You give wine and do all this. You know what uh, uh, Jesus' mother say, hey, uh, uh, do what he say now and, and, and get the bucket. Tell it, John. And he say, listen, listen, listen. The neighbor ran out of wine. Yes. So, so Jesus said, woman, what, ain't, what you want to do? He, she said, listen, they don't have no wine. The neighbors don't have no wine. Yes, sir. Now the Jews believe that you was in need of wine. We'll give it anything you need because you are a neighbor. But not this Samaritan. The Samaritan was nobody's neighbor. No, sir. So we don't know if the man in the ditch was a Samaritan. We don't know if he was from Jericho. We don't know if he was from Jericho. All we know is that the Samaritan then asked him, so what are you? Yes. Are you a Jew? The Samaritan then asked him, he wasn't prejudiced. That's right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you know the excitement of the whole Bible? It's wrapped up in this passage of scripture where Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The whole Bible is wrapped up in that. You mean to tell me that you told God you love him and you don't even love yourself? How could you love God and not love yourself? But if you love yourself, the Bible says in this passage of scripture, love your neighbor. No, I'm a good preacher, Jesus. I've been preaching. I know how to tell the story. And I can, Jesus, I got a good church. Jesus, I'm religious. Yes, sir. I got my religion, Jesus. I know how to say it, and I know how to do it. But how the man going to stay in the ditch then? Yes. How the man going to just die and you see him wounded there? You, 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 you know what I'm trying to say. So if you are someone's neighbor, yes. Jesus said, all right, now let's do it right now. Y'all, come on. Let's do it right. So the question was asked, who is my neighbor? That's what that, that's what that trick said. The priest, the guy, you know, the scribe, the lawyer. Jesus, who is my neighbor? And, and the Bible says after he took care of him and went to the inn and, and he did all that and he said, now listen, listen, listen. Whatever you spend more, I'll pay it. Whatever you need to do for him, I'm coming back and I'll do it because that's my neighbor. So Jesus got the question that you and I need to answer today. You need to ask this question, and so do I. Out of all these three people that went there, right? Mm -hmm. the, the guy that seen him that was the preacher. The, really, he said that he was a great preacher. He wasn't just a preacher. He was a priest. 
He was above the regular preacher. He was the knowledgeable. He probably was in the Sanhedrin. He probably had a Sadducee uh, award or something. He was above the Pharisee. He probably was a powerful man. But the Bible says Jesus ain't never lied about nothing. Jesus said he went to the other side and did not, not no compassion, no love, no nothing. And then Jesus said to Levi, you know that group that come from Aaron, Moses' brother, you know the original priest? Say, all right now, I'm, the Bible, Jesus said the man looked down in the ditch and saw the fell in bad shape, mm -hmm. and then he went to the other side. Mm -hmm. But this Samaritan, this throwaway cry, yes, you, you swear you better be, be very careful with these, this new generation. You think that they don't have love, but they have love. Yes, they do. They may be who get you out the ditch yes. after 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 you've been robbed, Preach. after you've been destroyed, after you've been lied to, after you've been bamboozled for yes. 40, 50 years yes. in somebody's church. This generation, these Samaritans, these, these ones that don't even try to be religious will get you out the ditch. Yes, sir. Take care of you. The Bible said he took his, his own wine like an anesthetic and he like like alcohol and he, and he and he healed his wound and then he took the oil to keep him from being in pain and, and, and sealed all his oil. So this stuff he bought in Jerusalem that he was gonna carry back to his house, but he didn't waste it. He put it on his neighbor. Yes, sir. Do y'all know what a neighbor is supposed to do with someone that is in need? Jesus said, well, all right, then, out of these three, which is the most neighborly? It's a good investment, Bishop. Jesus said, which is the neighbor? Oh, yes. You asked that question. Who is your neighbor? Jesus said, out of them three, you answer the question, which is the neighbor? And you know what that man said. You know what that priest, you know what that lawyer, you know what that strive said, the religious fella. You know what he said? He said, yes, the one that did good. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Jesus got a problem with that. It's as simple as that. Wait a minute now. Jesus got a problem with it because he answered correctly. This guy is so smart. Every answer he, he asked, Jesus did a Socratic response by asking him the same question. And when he, asked, when he answered the question, Jesus got the same answer every time. So Jesus gave him 100 on the test. Mm -hmm. He passed the test, but he could not pass the neighborly test yeah. of being a real representative of Jesus Christ. He yeah. couldn't pass that test. Yes, sir. But he passed the memory test. I guess he never smoked no marijuana or nothing. He never <laughs> drunk too much alcohol. So he had a good mind to know all the Mosaic law. He knew the prophets, but he didn't know that the neighbor was the person that he was supposed to take care of because the answer to who's your neighbor is the fellow that is in need not, 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 not the identity by being white, black, or whatever. Same church, same group, same. It's Preach whoever it, is in need is your neighbor. Thank you, Bishop. If they got a need, that's your neighbor. Hallelujah. You're going to be like Jesus. You what you going to do now? So Jesus had this problem. And the Bible says, in the 36th verse, 10th chapter of Luke, he said, Which now of these three? thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. The man immediately responded and said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do thou likewise. Now why, I don't want to close the Bible, but I got to ask you this question. Why didn't Jesus discipline this, this priest, this discipline this man? He said, now, uh, the one that showed mercy, is, the, is that's the real neighbor. Because he answered correctly, he knew the law, he knew, but he could not live it. Most preachers, most churches know the Bible, and they have it every Sunday and Wednesday, but they cannot live it. Brothers, hey. what are you talking about? I'm talking about you have a live church, power on, you got preacher preaching, you got choir singing, but when you come out the door of the church, you got a yard full of crackheads, you got prostitutes down the street. You got uh, uh, houses, people, uh, little boys carrying pistols. And you tell me that you know all the Bible and that is not your neighbor? Lord, until you got to do the funeral. Lord. When you kill a child and the child, they kill another. Say, well, uh, Lord, have mercy, these children sure killing themselves. 
Well, who is your neighbor? You, 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 were, you drove by the ditch, saw the children wounded, you saw them slinging crack, you saw their mothers drunk on the street, you saw their fathers beating their mothers, and you went into church, you know all of this mosaic stuff, but you could never address the neighborly question. Bishop. Now, why you couldn't address that question? Right here it lies, Jesus said, and I'm glad Jesus answered the way he did because he's God, but he said, go and do likewise. Nothing else did Jesus say to this man because Jesus knew his heart if he could not even bring to them the lip that the Samaritan, Jesus called him a Samaritan. If he could not even bring it to the lip that the Samaritan was his neighbor, he yes. couldn't even say his name. Yes, sir. The priest could not even say the Samaritan name because he hated the Samaritan. Yes, sir. He said they're the worst of the worst in the world. So he couldn't, Jesus said, well, what you mean did mercy, show mercy? Jesus kept calling him a good man. The priest can't say, well, that's a good man. No, he ain't nothing. He's a Samaritan. He ain't my neighbor. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, who is the most neighborly fool? Well, the one that showed most mercy. Well, call him the neighbor. If you call him the neighbor, then you'll stop by the project's Instead of going to the church and you'll sit down with them folks and you'll tell them about Jesus, you'll invite them into the church, but you will walk with them and talk with them and get the drugs out of their community because they are your neighbors. You got to do neighborly thing in order to have neighbors. He said, well, how am I going to be ever a friend to anybody? You have to be friendly. Neighborly. That's what the man was, the Samaritan. But the priest and, and the Levi couldn't even mention his name. They could not even call the name Samaria. They hated it. So Jesus knew the heart like he knew our heart. Let me ask you a question. You're mad at me. You told them folks that they ain't your nothing, your friend, your neighbor, your nothing. And then you probably said, well, he ain't even no preacher. The question is, Jesus, Jesus wanted this to be on the table. Who is neighborly? Jesus asked Simon number three, who's the most neighborly? The man answered the question properly. The one that showed the most mercy. Why can't you show mercy? Why can't you show mercy to the crackhead? Why can't you show mercy to them new drug dealers, them new drug smokers, you know, that synthetic drug they killing them, uh, this stuff that they, uh, you know, uh, like heroin, that's killing folks instantly. Why can't you be uh, show some mercy? What you just waiting on to do the funeral? You got to be the neighbor of the person that is in the ditch because they can't get out. They've been robbed. Let's just do, you know, uh, like a metaphor. Okay, so the the priest, the, the guy that with the, he, let's just say he's he's the now religious leader. That's what that's what it is. He's the he, he's what the religious leaders do right now, right? They so wise, they ask all these questions, but they don't do no action. And let's just say that the Levite, let's just say he's the church. And the church look at people's lives and say, well, if they want this voucher, the state that gave us so much money to give free food, if they better come up here and get it, we we'll, we going to give them what they, it's a shame, you won't even come and get free stuff, all right? Now let's describe the Samaritan. This is going to hurt. The definition and the description of the Samaritan is going to hurt you. You know why? Because Jesus identified with the Samaritan. Jesus and the Samaritan became neighborly. Jesus took on the Samaritan purse, the Samaritan walk, the Samaritan attitude. And he picked me up out the ditch. He picked you up out the ditch. He used his own wine to clean the wound. 
He used his own oil to stop the pain. He paid the debt for my, my stay in eternity. My house in heaven, Jesus paid the debt. He, Jesus took that Samaritan case. And that's what we have as neighbor. Jesus is more neighborly. We should be like Christ and be neighborly to those that do not have the preacher walk by them, the church walk by them, and Jesus is saying, get him out the ditch. Get her out the ditch. Don't wait till the child get killed. Don't wait till the mama got that. Oh, Lord, can y'all help me bury my child? Get her out the ditch. Get them out the ditch now. Because that's what neighborly mean. It's, it, you see them laying in the gutter. You see them on drugs. You see them prostitute. You see this and what is your job? Your job is to get them up out the ditch with your money. Put them on your beach. The Bible says put them on your beast. He stuck him on his beast. He put him in his car. He carried him to a place where they could do it like a hospital. They could treat him and care for him. And he said, when I get back, I know you're going to have some cars. That's Jesus. And he did it for all of us. He did it for me. Got me out the ditch. Amen. Use his wine to clean my wounds. Yes, sir. Use his oil to stop my pain. He got us all out the ditch. Jesus took me to heaven and put me in a room, wrote my name down so I would have somewhere to live forever. And he said, I paid the debt. No rent is due because I paid the debt. So today you ought to be neighborly with your, listen, listen, everybody want to know where to go. Amen. Work where you are called, yes. so say Paul. In your neighborhood, you got your church there, right? That's where you're flipping that money, right? That's where you and the deacons count all them receipts, right? That's where you send your children to college out for that community, right? Work right there. Somebody ought to tell you the truth. Amen. You need to be neighborly. Jesus said that's what the Bible say. Neighborly means you ought to take care of somebody without expecting anything back. Amen. And do it because Jesus did it for you. Amen. And then the Bible says that Jesus didn't even follow the question up again. He said, well, go and do that and you'll live. Do likewise. Amen. So we know better. That's what he's saying. Y'all know better. You know what to do. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing me to know that I can help folks and don't have to charge them. Amen. But I want to pray. I want to pray. Lord God, we need resources for this ministry. Thank you, we need resources for our walk, for our talk, for our life, for, the, for this church, for everything we do. We need resources, Lord Jesus, so we can be neighborly. Amen. Do you know that the neighborly thing, according to the Lord, the neighborly thing was that the Samaritan had wine. Amen. We need resources so we can buy the anesthetics, so we can buy the band-aids, so we can buy the oil. The, we need resources so we can take care of the person, so we can get them out the ditch, put them in a safe place, and let them heal the resources of the Lord, what we need to do it. Lord, I pray that you supply us with the resources yes, so we can God. get some of these folks up out of these ditches yes. and let them see the glory and the goodness of of your love. And Lord, that will make us so neighborly. I tell you. And if you already getting the resources, you ought to do Woo! the right thing with it. He said to do it. Yeah. He said to Hallelujah. do it. Hallelujah. He said to do it. Use what you have. Use what you Because the earth is the Lord's and, and the, the fullness, fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. It belongs to him anyway. Ain't that right? Girl, give me some praise. Hey, you hey, Glory to God. God. Give me hey, some kind of praise. Jesus. You know, somebody ought to say amen. And that's got to be a praise. Glory to God, she makes me want to dance or something. I don't know if I can preach after this, but God got something special for us. All of us. Y'all hear me? Oh, A hundred yeah. years from now, this message is going to be good because our neighborly it's Wednesday night. Wednesday it's night. Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. It's Wednesday night.
to the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Hey, it's Wednesday night. Praise him, sister. It's Wednesday night. Praise him now. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There you go. Praise him. I know Hallelujah. it's good. It is good. It's Wednesday night. Yes, sir. Yes. Praise him. Won't he do it? Yes, sir. Hey! Hallelujah. It's Wednesday night. Hallelujah. It's Wednesday night. Praise God. It's Wednesday night fellowship. We got that Holy Ghost Glory in here. Glory to God. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. Glory to Enough God. Enough to blow your mind. I'll tell you what We'll it is. see you next week. Glory. Don't forget to tune in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is where the Lord, Holy Spirit resides. Glory to God. It can't get no real in this right, Bishop. This is it. God Praise bless the you Lord. Praise him. We just thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah is my prayer. Thank you, Lord. Boy, I love the Lord. But I love you too. Oh, yeah. I, I love do. you too, you Bishop. I tell you. You got it in the name yeah, of Jesus. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Everything in his name. Glory Thank to Lord. God. Everything in his name. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Well, we'll see you later. Amen. Ooh, I'm we just praise and thank him for it. Wonderful. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. We thank you for tuning in to Full Faith International Ministries with the Bishop Johnny L. Rutledge. Praise the Lord. Giving you messages of faith, hope, and inspiration. Tune in next week to the Full Faith International Ministries, faithtv.lightcast.com. Um, Wednesday Night <laughs> Fellowship. <laughs> And don't forget to tune in on Sundays for the Sunday Live every Sunday at 2 p.m. God bless you tonight. And God keep you as our prayer. Love you. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>